In this video, I'm going to be giving a side-by-side -side detailed comparison between DaVinci Resolve's new Film Look Creator Effect and Dehancer Pro. I'm also going to be sharing my thoughts on what is best for each scenario and which may be better for you. There are quite a few differences, so let's go ahead and start a fresh project and we're going to be looking at them side-by-side. -side. Okay, so here's my clip here. and. First, what we're going to do is go to our project settings because we want to make for sure we have that set up appropriately. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to be working in DaVinci White Gamma Intermediate. So we're going to go down here to our color management, change our color science to DaVinci YRGB, and then we're going to change our timeline color space to DaVinci White Gamma Intermediate. Since I'm on a Mac, what I like to do is change this to Rec 709A. If you're on a PC, you probably don't have to worry about this. This is pretty much all about delivery. So if it's going to be going to YouTube or online or to another Mac user, use Rec 709A. If you're going to be using something like VLC, um, if your client wants that, you're going to want to choose something different. Maybe Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to choose Rec 709A. But let's go to master settings and let's leave it at 1080 HD. We're going to see how it plays back. And then next, let's just add our clip to the timeline. Since our project is set up like how it is, we have to do some nodes to tell DaVinci what color space we want to use for this clip. So I'm going to add a node right there. This one will be called 2DWG. This one's going to be called 2Rex709. Before I dive in, I just want to make clear, and it's pretty obvious, these are takes on film emulation, and obviously when you're doing digital work, you're not going to get a one-to-one. -one. Just getting that out there, because right now it's still technically impossible to get a one-to-one -one recreation, but we're doing the best we can uh, shooting digitally. All right, now that we have this set up, we're going to go to here and add color space transform. And actually, if you'll notice, I'm using the DaVinci Resolve Studio 19 public beta, like beta one. So I, I like doing the public beta with this stuff. I like seeing and playing with the new features. I like trying to get ahead when it comes to like knowing all the new tech and things that you can do to your footage. This is pretty simple to set up your project like this. We're going to go to our input setting and change this to Blackmagic Design Y Gamut 4.5. Input Gamma is going to be Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5. And then we want to get to DaVinci Y Gamut because you're going to be using both Dehancer and the Film Look Creator in DaVinci Y Gamut today for the purpose of this video and DaVinci Intermediate for the output gamma. So now that's set up, we're gonna go over here. And so we need to get back to Rec 709. So we're gonna put another color space transform on here. This is gonna be DaVinci Y Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and then Rec 709, and then Gamma 2.4. And that converts our image to Rec 709. We are now no longer in log form. And before I go into either of those, it's, it's best at this case to look at your image. You want to make for sure it's properly exposed and balanced. Otherwise, you're going to get some kind of wonky results no matter what you do with your footage. So one way that we can kind of check, we're going to go to our waveform here. And you can kind of see where the shadows, the red, the green, and blue, they're all pretty similar. So we know our shadows are pretty balanced. To check skin tone, I can go up closer. On here we're pushing magenta a little bit but again it's not too bad so maybe we want to go into our tent and not push it too far like maybe let's do 10 and then you can see here on the vector scope I mean it's pretty pretty balanced in terms of kind of what colors we have again we have lots of greenery we have shadows we have this sunlight that's was starting to set on her right side and then let's look at false color kind of help us with the exposure. I know like she's mostly in shadow. So again, it's going to be a darker image. So let's go to show all and I'm going to put on false color. You don't technically have to do this if you know you've exposed properly and you're pretty sure. I shot this footage and I'm not ultra for sure how close it is. I can go by my eye, but I also just like having things to help. Nothing wrong with like using tools to help out. A lot of options here. 
pocket cinema camera. We are ISO 400. Gotcha. So it's a pretty dynamic image. So what I'm looking for is the skin tone being between 40 and 50, like right in between this green and pink. So I'm gonna go here. Now we have the green, but maybe I'd like to see a little bit more pink, but then I'm kind of overexposing. So let's put it like, like right there. Okay, so we're not gonna do too much. Turn off the false color, and that's pretty close. We definitely wanna add some contrast, and then at this stage, we just want to kind of just visually look at the image and kind of determine like what we want to do to the image. Uh, we want to add contrast to it since we're going for film emulation. If you're not going for film emulation, you're going for just sort of a washed look, like, you know, you're done with your image here. We're going after the film look, so that's built up of heavy contrast, split toning, grain, halation, bloom, all those things get some dense colors. Celluloid film has very like dense reds, so that's gonna be something we're looking for. Before we start putting on the effects, it's good to know that the film look creator is for getting a film look. The Enhancer Pro is for actual film stock emulation. And it's important to know the difference. And what I mean by that is in the presentation, Blackmagic Design talked about the film look creator. The film look is based on 60 different parameters. What it sounds like they're doing is they're taking all film-like qualities, the split toning, the, you know, the dense colors, kind of desaturated look, the heavy contrast, and they're taking all those aspects and putting it into a node. So it's giving you more so a film look as of Dehancer Pro is gonna be actually trying to emulate a specific stock. So let's actually make room for two nodes because we can go back and forth. This one right here is gonna be the film look creator. Actually, let's just call it FLC for short. I don't feel like typing all that out. And then this one is Dehancer Pro. We're going to get a film look creator going on this middle node here. And you'll see right away, it already imparts a look. Here's before, here's after. And notice here how quickly we have a film look without having to do a ton of stuff. And that's going to be important because I'm going to do Dehancer Pro. And if you've used Dehancer Pro, getting a look this straight away isn't super possible. Like you have to do a few more things to get the film look or emulate film with that plugin. There's pros and cons to both of these. So just keep a note of that, have how quickly just hitting the plugin, you already have a film look created. You have several different presets, uh, default 65, default 35. What I've noticed in the scopes, and you can see this here, the red, green, and blue gets thicker. And so what I'm imagining happen is the grain is getting more intense. Let's actually just verify, see if I'm right. So the amount of grain on the 35 is 0.3, on the 65 is 0.125. So that's what it is, is the 35 millimeter is gonna have more grain to it and also a heavier vignette. You can see on the sides, when I switch to 35, it gets darkened. And I've only been messing with this effect just for a little bit. I literally downloaded this yesterday, last night, and I was just kind of playing around with it. I may skip over things by accident, just trying to go through all this. Um, the next one's cinematic. That's gonna add your black bars on here. And it's important to note that, obviously I didn't frame this for, it looks like, 239 aspect ratio or 235. So what you can do is actually go down here to the film gate and turn off the film gate. And what that does is it actually puts the film look creator effect into back into custom. Just know that you can start from there and then you can turn off the fill gate. And then cinematic, that again is gonna add some bars on there. Two, four, one, if you get rid of the film gate. And then bleach a bypass. So as you can see here, lots of grain. And a lot of the saturation has been sucked out of the image. Nostalgic, uh, similar to the bleach bypass only it's not as contrasty. We have default no effects. So on this effects blend, if I turn it, nothing should happen because there's no effects on there. So that's just adding just the color on here. I believe that's gonna include the color settings, the split toning, but it's going to be taking out things like vignette. So if I enable vignette, 
So if you want to have a good starting point, I love the look of 65 millimeter film. I mean, who doesn't? So we're going to start from there. And then as we change things, it's going to change it to custom, but all of our settings are starting at a good start point. We're going to go down to color space overrides. And because of how we have our project settings set up, we don't need to change any of these things. This is using timeline for your input color space gamma output color space and gamma so our timeline color space is davinci y gamma intermediate so it's basically using that it's doing that because we're managing a nodes and our nodes are taking us to davinci wide gamut and then taking us back out of davinci wide gamut so it's pretty cool how this is set up pretty powerful controls the exposure contrast and the highlights are photometric which basically more exact to how light works and that sort of thing. So one thing that's noticeable of film is dense colors. So in Dehancer Pro, what I would do is I would lower exposure and it would heighten contrast, but you notice our shadows are pretty crushed. So they have this fade slider and what that basically does, that's like your black point-ish. Again, like these are simple controls, but I know from the presentation you know I'm sure there's a ton of other sliders going on with it so if you turn up the fade that's gonna raise your black point which that will allow you to get like a dense look without just completely tanking your image and then we can go into our highlights and this is gonna be controlling how compressed they are and so you can't see a ton of this image but if you look at this top right as I go up and down the highlights it opens it up more as I go to the right and it compresses as I go to the left and here the next cool control that's pretty genius is white balance we're actually gonna leave this as it is but it actually uses the chromatic adaptation which is another tool you can find in DaVinci Resolve to where say if I wanted it cooler these are the this is like the exact white balance so if I got I can go to like 5600 7500 <laughs> Hey, that's not bad. So maybe I'd want to do it there. We have our tent. We've already adjusted that. The skin bias is really cool. Is if you go to the left, your skin tones are going to be more yellowish. If you go to the right, they're going to be more magenta. Say if you put on a, an effect on here that swayed the skin tone past what you typically like your skin tone to be at, you can use this to kind of bias it back to where you want the skin tone to be. And then subtractive saturation. What that does is it's going to introduce saturation, but it's not going to adjust luminance. So this is going to make colors just more dense. However, the subtractive saturation and the richness, as I've found out earlier, you can go too far too quick. So let's start upping the subtractive saturation. You'll see what I mean. And especially with the different colors going on. Yeah, we're definitely kind of getting a garish look. Maybe we don't want to do that much. The scene is already pretty colorful. And I found with saturation, you can get a lot of dense colors with just exposure and contrast. I typically go for those exposure and contrast controls first before I touch any saturation. And then richness also kind of deals with saturation. Those are gonna be maybe for, maybe for images that already don't have a ton of color in them already. And then bleach bypass. That just kind of sucks the color out of everything. So I guess if you wanted to do a bleach bypass and then maybe add in your saturation like that and then your richness, you can start to get a really stylized look. But we're gonna reset those. And I'm actually gonna go back up to contrast. This is a little too much contrast for me. And then go exposure down. So that's where we're at right now. The next we're going to go to split tone. And what this is doing is doing a ton of things all at once is in film emulation, you typically have your highlights are warmer and your shadows are cooler. And what this is doing is it's sort of doing it already for you. As I add the mount, of split toning you see on the saturation it's just being pulled the image doesn't look great but this is just to show you like what the split toning is doing so maybe we don't want a ton maybe we put in a little there and maybe change the hue the pivots there just to let you know where the middle gray point is it doesn't mean you have to actually set it there i'm going to go back in the color settings and actually get rid of some saturation a little bit more contrast. So the next thing we're going to get into is halation, which is already turned on. That's going to be the 
red outline around our high contrast areas. I turn it off, back on. This halation effect is very light. Bloom's already on, pretty self-explanatory what Bloom is doing. And grain. We don't see a ton of grain right now. More and more I've been liking lots and lots of grain. So we're gonna kind of pile it on right there. And in shooting celluloid film, the photograph, the motion picture, it's actually made above grain. Um, that's gonna be the difference between this Film Look Creator and Dehancer Pro. Dehancer Pro actually builds your image out of grain and that will make your grain look better, but also keep in mind if, if it's building your image out of grain, it's using processing power. So that's gonna be a really big differentiator between the Film Look Creator and Dehancer Pro is the amount of processing power. And to show you that, what we'll do is we're gonna click up here this 3D LUT compatible checkbox. We're gonna click it and that's gonna turn off the effects like grain, halation, flicker, all that. And what that will allow you to do is play this clip back and basically real time. If I were to go up here and unclick it where it has the grain and halation back in there and I go to play it, my playback speed is 13 frames a second. Dehancer Pro can do this, but there's a little bit of a workaround. You actually have to create a LUT from the plugin, take it out and put it back in. So that's a pretty big overview on the film like creator kind of impressions after this is it does give you a really great film look and starting point however i think where it's going to fall short in my workflow is that it's not emulating a specific stock so like it's a little bit of a one trick pony once you put it on there it's just kind of whatever look it gives you you're kind of with that i mean they do have a bleach bypass look you're sort of getting like an amalgamation of film characteristics. You're not getting like an actual emulating of a stock. And so let me actually turn this off and we're gonna build a film look in Dehancer. Okay, so we're gonna go to Dehancer Pro and Dehancer Pro version 7.1. We're gonna put that on there. It's also probably good to note that this is the public beta. You know, if you're watching this and it's several years later, um, they may have added more features into the Film Look Creator. What's really cool is how they kind of, they literally have taken effects that they've already had and then they've combined it with algorithms that control multiple parameters with one slider. You'll see here it's sort of the biggest kind of hurdle you can face when you, when you put on Dehancer is there's a lot more controls but you have a lot more control of what you want your image to be. It's also much more expensive. It's going to be like $300 or you get the license for free if you buy like a DaVinci or if you buy like a Blackmagic Resolve product. Dehancer Pro I think is $450. And then since we're working in DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, we're going to change the source to DVRYG slash intermediate. We're going to go select 200T. We're going to go down to our profile to our print film right here. And since I already have a ton of Dehancer Pro content on YouTube already, I'm not gonna dive so much into that. This is more of just creating a film-like look with the same image and then just comparing the two. Dehancer Pro, you're gonna have a lot more uh, controls like you know film compression expand you can directly control our white points and black points and then we can go into here and you know we have our exposure control tonal contrast that's the same so we'll lower the exposure hide the contrast and then maybe put analog range limiter on there we have a color density slider this color density slider in Dehancer Pro works more smooth than Dehancer Pro than the Film Look Creator. I will say the headroom is not as high, so we'll have to do a trick I learned. We're gonna go and expand. Let's say if we wanna really raise the kind of exposure, and then we can actually go into our film compression, kind of smooth out the top end like that. And then here down we have our color head. Again, this is something you're not gonna find in the Film Look Creator. You can switch your yellow, blue, magenta, green, cyan, red. And this is important if you want to have a plugin that you do all the grading in the plugin itself. When I'm using Enhancer Pro, I like using the controls inside of it because they've built these controls specifically in relation to like manipulating analog media. I think that's pretty cool. So I usually try to stick to that. Film grain will change this to 6550. And you'll see here when I try to play the back, we're getting one frame less playback. 
But what it's doing with the grain, and I don't know if you can see, I'll pump it up so you can see. The image is actually built out of the grain, so it's using more processing power for Dehancer Pro. And then we're gonna enable halation, bloom, Again, I already went over these and I have a ton of videos on my channel already. If you're new to Dehancer Pro or you're learning on this video first, check out my other videos. I have a, literally a ton of content on there about it. Dehancer Pro, you can use the input color profiles if you want to choose the camera ones or you can work in DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. And then here, what you can do that really sets Dehancer Pro apart from the Filmlet Creator is I can go in and do a push-pull on the film. to get even different looks. And then let's actually go in here to the color head. We're gonna turn preserve exposure all the way down. And then let's introduce some cyan. Again, these are controls you can't find in the film look creator. And then maybe shadows tone, you can kind of play around with that. Go up to your highlights. Let's switch back to the film look creator. And quite a bit different. Um, I can say I like the Dehancer Pro film emulation more. They, how they build their plugin is they're taking actual samples of analog ma material and they're converting that to DaVinci somehow. And for me, it just looks better. The process takes longer and it's more expensive, but the result you get is great. Who's the film look creator for? Who, want, who should use the effect? Um, and I'm gonna say someone who is a content creator who needs quick turnaround time, someone who's a solo shooter, Someone who doesn't have that budget to spend $450 on a plugin uh, like Dehancer Pro. Someone who maybe want to use it just as a placeholder so they don't have to watch log as they're editing. Someone who just wants to have a quick film look without putting a ton of time and effort into Dehancer Pro. Dehancer takes a long time to learn and figure out. If you're willing to put in the time and energy and money, uh, Dehancer Pro, in my opinion, looks way better. So that's my opinion. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.